Talking to Kurt Schilling this morning, who, by the way, lives real close to the stadium in Foxborough. And I, I don't remember exactly, but I, I could have sworn that back when Drew Bledsoe was leaving the, the, the Patriots, yep. didn't, didn't you buy his house? Or I something? live in his house. Yes, you I do. do. Yes, I do. Well, it's I not have, your house. Yeah, it is not my his house. house. He doesn't <laughs> still live there. I, I, I've actually gotten to know Drew. One of, I don't know if you've ever met yeah, him. Yeah, we know him well. One of, he's a phenomenal yes. man. And uh, we've talked a couple times in the past, and uh, I love it. I but li- that's one of those deals where, like, you're a you're, you know, $100 million type quarterback, right? And so you buy a crazy house. He built we- it. He actually built the house from the ground up. Right. And it happened when he left. He he. They were they were deciding on their final dream home. They literally poured the foundation, and he got traded. Right. And they had to make a decision whether they were going to continue to build it or not. Right, and he wasn't going to be like a lifelong Bostonian. And so then you're very limited as to who you can yeah, sell your home to. Like <laughs> yeah, right now, much. Phil Nicholson has a house for sale in Rancho Santa Fe. That's he's asking like seven point something million for it, right? But like two years ago or three years ago, he was asking like ten million. Finally, he's like, God, we've been holding on to this thing for three years. Yeah, I'm not I've really lost. sure the market yeah. changes from ten to seven. I yeah, don't know right, that you right. open up all the pool very much. Right, yeah. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, there's people to buy. So you bought Bledsoe's house, and you've been living there ever Absolutely. since. Yeah, we made our home there. Our kids are in public school system there. It's the second best public school system by ranking in the United States. Uh, it's it's 30 minutes from my office in Providence now, and and uh, and we couldn't be happier. What kind well, of house is it? I want to hear about this it's, house. It's pretty. It's, 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 it's more square footage than we need on more property than we need. Um, but it, it, at the time when I moved to Boston, it was what we had to have. The privacy that it afforded us was, was crucial for us to get, get I'm impressed it. that you know that the, the ranking of the school system. Well, it's it's a, I have four yeah. kids, right? Yeah. I, I, I actually live a real life, and, and we all do to some degree. Um, you don't play video games all the time. I play right? video games right. all the time, right. which is why actually I'm here at Radio Row this week. Are right, you have four kids? I have four kids, How three old? boys and a girl. 16, 14, 12, and 9. I'm the opposite. Go ahead. Tell them. I'm the opposite. One boy, three girls, oh. 11, 9, 8, yeah, 5. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the yeah. one girl is like 11. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, 11 girls. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm overmatched it's getting and overwhelmed. Worse. You've yeah. done it. This is your 11th or 12th yeah. straight Super uh, 12th, Bowl broadcast? I think. I think 12th, yeah. Wow. Which is really amazing for me. And, uh, you know, having the ability to be in the booth, watch the game, and watch some of the great games that we've had, you know, the Pittsburgh-Arizona game, the Carolina uh, New England game, uh, the Philadelphia New England game, uh, the Giant New England game, and I, and I can go on and on and on about New England games. Uh, yeah, it seems, seems like, like New England, <laughs> New England, New England. But see, you know, yeah. th- this is going to be their what seventh appearance in the Super Bowl. I know, amazing. the New England Patriots. You know, a team that in the seventies and the eighties really, well, until you know, like uh, they went to the eighties against uh, the Bears, the Bears right, right. Right. right? And then and then Parcells got there and then played against the Packers. And now since Belichick has been there, this has been the decade. Of the New England Patriots. What is it? What? What? what can you put your finger on Tom it? Brady? That's Tom it. Brady is really what it is. not Bill Belichick. Wow. Uh, well, it's Bill Belichick. But when Tom Brady got on the field, and then all of a sudden, you know, he had this confidence thing that hit him. You know, I don't know where it hit him, but the fact that he won the Super Bowl in his first year as the starter, uh, to me, put them on a path to be great. Yeah. Now, it's their defense has come up with some great plays, yep. but. You know, in your years at San Diego, who were your quarterbacks? Well, Dan Fouts. Dan Fouts, First right, when you got foremost. there, right. And as the, as the defenders, I mean, we, we realized that it was going to be a, a question of whether or not we could stop the other team's offense enough times. Right. Because we knew Dan was going to move the, move the ball and he was going to score touchdowns. We knew that. And at the end of the day, we could look back and say, that didn't get it done. That's right. And, you know, because you, you still got to have those premier defensive players. And when you think of the Patriots, you think of Ty Law, Asante Samuel, Rodney Harrison, Teddy Bruschi, Mike Vrabel, Vince Wilfork, uh, Richard Seymour. All these guys. Junior's listening right now. Right, Junior's saying say my name. Say say <laughs> but they all came up with plays. Yeah. They gave up a lot of yards like this defense does now. But somehow. They made plays, and last week against the uh, the Baltimore Ravens, it was a little-known player by the name of Sterling Moore right. who knocked the ball out of Lee Evans' hands because all of us, for a split second, thought that the Ravens were going to be here at the Super Bowl. Dude, talk to us about your Giants, man. I mean, yeah. are, you, are you jonesing out like, damn, I retired, we're going to another I Super got my Bowl. ring. I know they, they still got to get one. They got to <laughs> win it. So uh, I'd rather take the one I have, but I mean, I'm very happy for these guys. They've turned it around. When they were 7-7, seven and seven, I was like everybody else, what the heck is wrong with these boys, you know? How do they beat the Cowboys in the next week just not show up at home right. against a divisional foe that you knew very well? They beat you in week one, and you didn't show up. But I tell you what, man, Coach Coffin, he talked to the boys, gave him a speech. Some guys got healthy. They got some guys back. They swallowed their pride. They stopped talking. They went out there and started making plays. They went above the X and O's. 
And now five games later, these guys are in the Super Bowl. And Tom Coughlin's job was on the line. I mean, when is his job not on the line? Well, yeah, that's right. true. No, you, got, you got a good point there. But, I mean, he, he got them and he inspired them, and they, they were a different team. Yeah, he, I mean, he was. I mean, obviously, I was with him for five years. I still speak with him now very often in the off season and during the season. He does a great job as far as delivering the message. He's very matter of fact, matter of fact in the moment. Um, does a great job as far as that. And he gets he knows the right guys or so, two or three guys that he points on and says, you know what, get them going. You know, get them going. Were you one of those guys before yeah, you? Myself, yeah, straight uh-huh. hand, uh, Monty Toomer, those guys on offense. But he knows. you know. And, and the, the biggest thing with football, peer pressure. Let me hear from my, my guy I'm in the locker room next to or I'm lined up next to mm-hmm. that may be the coach. And, and he let a couple guys have a little bit more freedom. But at the end of the day, these guys start playing better. And when they play better, their swagger level went up a little bit, confidence. Eli Manning lights out all year, but all that goes down hand in hand. So uh, you got to give Coffin credit. This guy, in, what, eight seasons, one losing season, and we still want to fire him every offseason or every every week in the National It'll Football League season. That's crazy. <laughs> Dahani Jones, who now has gone from NFL linebacker to, you got to tell, I always see the uh, promos for your TV show on the Travel Channel. Yep. Uh, how long have you been going? Well, that um, show, Honey Tackles the Globe, that was on Travel Channel. That went for two years. Now I have, an- I have another show on Big Ten Network called Live Big. And I had another show on VH1 called Ton of Cash. So um, Rewirement has been great. And now I've. Uh, are you producing ha- these shows or are you hosting these shows? You get like a uh, job in casting? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. And, um, you know, it's been a fantastic experience. I mean, I even got to cover the Big Ten Championship this year, you know, on Fox. So, uh, you know, I've I'd, I'd just been been able to do a fair amount of different things and i've been fortunate because of incredible relationships what about ton of cash i don't know the story ton of cash what, what it was, ton what of is cash that? is 14 people in financial peril competing to win a million dollars wow. let's see what it takes they're gonna travel from malibu to las vegas and the only caveat is they got to carry the cash what in bills mean? in bullion one million dollars one million I mean, dollars. is it? But if it's One a check? One ton of cash. Oh, oh wow. Wait a second. So, Because, so, again, premise of the show is you got to go from L.A. Premise to of the show is 14 people, as yeah. I said. I understood, but where, what is Vegas 14 people are carrying anything? one ton of cash, uh-huh. literally one ton of cash, which is $1 million. <laughs> I know. We're the athletes here. Do I know this show? Do you know this show? I don't know. I just explained it to you. <laughs> he tried to tell us he about it. He's crew. He's crew. One million crew. dollars. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, but but so. so you, Why are you getting analytic about this? I want to hear it's more about one, it. Sounds it's, good. It's, Why are you getting all loud back there about it, though? Because <laughs> I still see this lead. Now it's, a, it's an 88 counter tray coming at me. I got to hit the edge. <laughs> Not the counter I'm tray. Just, I'm just excited oh, about no. it. I'm excited about it. No, no. It was, it's an awesome show. Um, you know, it's 14 people. It's kind of like, like real world, road rules. Um, you know, um, all these different shows, but mm-hmm. it was it was a it was a it was a reality show, so it's fantastic. But awesome, Honey Jones is out of his mind. I love. I'm him. not out of my mind. What yeah, no, in a great it? way. What are you kidding me? I should love yeah. you, man. I Huge fan. That. I love you too. You, man. Thank you. you too. When are you going to be out in San Diego? See, see, see now it's and I love out. you together. Time out. Well, yeah, no, it is time out. You have Make kids. Up. You have any kids? I don't have kids. My 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 sister has two kids. Um, she just had a birthday, so you know Cecilia Rose and you know. They're awesome. Sadie Grace, they're awesome. So yeah. take care of them like they're my own. You're an uncle. But you're still a single guy. I'm a single man. Really? You know, last night I'm we were single, out with a guy. He's not a man. guy. He's a man. Oh, single, single man. man. Single yeah. man. Last I, night we I, were I, out. I, I corrected him subtly. I yeah, he did. nice. We are out with a guy last night who's uh, <laughs> played 16 years in the NFL, still single. And he's like, listen, I'm single, and I'm still living the single life. And he was telling the stories of what it is to be 41. No, I'm not going to be 41 in the club. I refuse. How old are you? I'm 33. I'm not going to be 41 in a club. I think that's for a little bit. Get eight years to get. That you know, thing. go to, go to the cigar bar, and have a cigar, and have a scotch. I mean, you can't. You, you should do that at 41. I mean, you can't be in. The, oh, he's still doing that. Oh, he's still doing it. Oh, he's still doing it. Can't, can't do you know what that is, Billy Ray? That's, 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 that's life in the clubs. You know? Oh, I can't. That's like you're airing your yeah, bike Freddy tires does. or something. Freddie walks around all day going. Wow. We are doing technical talk. I mean, this kid's still living with like Cristal, shaking bottles of Cristal. You know. <laughs> on, the, on the beach in San Tropez. No, no, you have to, you have to, you have to make that transition because I think the ultimate thing in life is to see the reflection of yourself in your own children. So I haven't had that opportunity. What, what are you laughing at? 
That's so true, you right? You see the oh, reflection no. of your own life and your no, daughter? No, it's, it would be horrifying for my daughter <laughs> to think that I look at her and, and see myself. I mean, she see a little bit of yourself. takes after my wife, thank goodness. She yeah. doesn't have any aggressive tendencies? No, no, no. No? I'm hoping not. No. Hoping not? No. How about your forgetfulness? Yes. yes. <laughs> she does. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. You know, I'm thinking about something. You know, I'm looking at my watch. Yes. This does not compute. Talk you guys being on the air at 11:30 local, right? But it's only 8:20 in San Diego. Mm-hmm. That's the magic of radio. Right. Huh? I'm San Diego oh. sports leader. Double X 1090. Right. James, how are you, buddy? I'm doing very well. Now you're going to be on the New England side, and then our boy Mark Malone will be over on the Giant side. Now, let me just tell you this: I've been on the sideline the last two Super Bowls prior to this game. I am assigned the winning sideline. Two years ago, I'm on with the New Orleans Saints. Last year with the Green Bay Packers. This year, for anyone who wants to head out to Saquon, can they bet at Saquon? I don't know if they can, they but can if go they, they can't, they Billy can, Ray will take can, your action. They can, they can shake hands with somebody as to yes. who they think might win. <laughs> right. I'm on the Patriots sideline. So I have not gotten a script from NBC television, but I'm, I heard this game goes down to the last minutes that you really want to tune in and watch this game. All right. Well, I know I do. And we're going to be do doing you, the Madonna do you concert. Agree, though, do, do you agree with the assignment? Do you think that's really the way it's going to play out? I asked could I be on both sidelines at once. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Malone's on the other side. Uh-huh. Saw Mark yesterday. Billy Ray and I saw Mark in the lobby of the hotel. In fact, he told us that your wife and his girlfriend were together at that moment. They were, they were hanging out. And uh, they came back with half full bottles of uh, beverages. Nice. Mark was happy. He said, he said I'm not going to have to buy booze all night because Beverly's already taken care of everything. That's what he said. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know. Mark Malone looks like he could be an offensive lineman. He is a giant beast of a Sasquatch of a dude. Seriously. Don't you think? He's um, I, the one thing that, that kind of sets him apart. Is the uh, earring? Earring. What is that all about? <laughs> it's a tiny little earring. What is that? But it's a little, t- yeah, it's a little dainty. Yeah. Uh, what is earring. that? Maybe his ears have grown. Like when you're 18 and you're in high school I and guess. you maybe have like an earring for the first time, like maybe. But when you're 45, well, he's nice, 50. When you're 50 something, <laughs> yeah, 50. when you're 50 and you're a former NFL quarterback and you're you're like a professional, bro- why does he walk around with that earring? <laughs> the, Black guys this, get away with true story. This, true. White this guys. This is kind of that uncomfortable <laughs> moment <laughs> deal Black that I've heard about. Huh? No <laughs> doubt, white guys. It doesn't look good on a white guy. <laughs> uncomfortable moment. I, I'm not going. You, you know the show, man. Not going. You guys. know the show. <laughs> James Lofton's yeah. the man. Yes, Your wife is. is phenomenal. We love her. It was so great to see her a couple weeks ago down at the Rock Church when we went down there. Was she shocked or what? The Hebrew brother well, pulled in. You know what? She, it was nice because she had not met you before. So, you know, <laughs> when people have heard your voice, they feel like they know you. And, you know, since we work together, you know, I've talked about you. So it's kind of nice for her to put the face with the legend. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and when, when she saw him at church and, yeah. and realizing what this meant for this, this man to walk in and, <laughs> I mean, to be a part of it all. James, oh. was she just absolutely overwhelmed well, the the doors are open to everybody true yeah it's true and i loved it i had a great time we're talking now, to papa john from papa john's pizza and obviously he's here promoting you know you've seen the tv commercials with peyton manning and jerome bettis but i could care less because i'm really fascinated by how big your company is and how successful it's been um one of the things that's really amazing about your company and i hate to be just given a you know free commercial here is your is your online i can order a pizza online i can watch myself put my own toppings online it's a really great interactive way to order a pizza and you guys have made it easy enough that even morons like me can figure out how to order a pizza online well the that's interesting in our rs department uh led by cynthia and lance are outstanding they just are very good but in 2001 2000 you ever try ordering a papa john's pizza online <laughs> yes i have, have and it's fantastic it's yes. unbelievable you take that's sausage and you just throw it on there and all of a sudden the sausage shows but, up but, on but your pizza can we ask him questions about the peyton manning commercial oh, who cares <laughs> but, but i gotta tell you this online story so in 2001 2002 I thought the business was going to go towards I, uh, the Internet. I thought that. And I'm not a really tech guy, but so we spent $8 million on online sales to build wow. a computer. It was a total flop. And I almost lost my job in 03 and 04 because I spent $8 million and it was a half percent of our business. What do you mean lost your job? It's your company. Well, I work for the board. <laughs> That's right. They weren't very happy with me spending Is, is Papa John's public now? <laughs> We're public. You are. Uh-huh. Gotcha. So, right. yeah, I mean, they could fire you. They'd be like, hey, Papa, you're going to still were, be a character. Yeah. And you know, you'd be like the, the jack-in-the-box guy right. before you know it. Exactly. And the next next year we did 5%. Next year we did 10 And right now over 30% of our business is either an iPhone 
uh, internet or something. So it's to your point. We went from yeah. where it was zero, and it moves extremely quickly. So I thought you were just a step ahead. You were just a little bit too early. We were. I was two years right, too early. Yeah. yeah. I am just fascinated by you. How old a guy are you? I'm 50. 50 years old. 50. And and you started this little pizza business. And when you expanded, did you say, hey, I need to borrow some money from the bank. I need to get a small business loan. Or how'd that happen? Well, we got turned down for a million dollars in 91 and got down turned down for three million in 92. Three million. And then went public in 93. And the business went worth maybe a million to worth 200 million in one day. We raised 25 million bucks and we were off the races. That's how we did it. We got the we got the influ, uh, inf, uh, influence of some cash, and the uh, influx of cash from uh, going public. We're on the Nasdaq under pizza. We're uh, over thirty nine dollars a share, and um, you know it's uh, approaching a billion dollars. Awesome. Do you like wake up in the morning and like <laughs> go to the bathroom and like look in the mirror and go, okay? I mean, it was one pizza shop where I was trying to help my dad get out of bankruptcy, and now I'm a billionaire. I'm not a billionaire. How the close are we? No, I can't. <laughs> um, Pretty close. I, no. <laughs> I don't mean to embarrass you, man. I'm talking no. about your success, dude. Congratulations. Well, first, uh, um, the, yeah, our shoulders the, have done really well, and we, we work very hard. But I, I think I work, wake up a little scared every day because I don't want to blow it. I don't, I mean, I mean, you know, to have, I mean, this economy, I feel lucky to have a job, much less to be as prosperous. And I think there's a little bit of the bar still in me where I'm scared of failure. Do you, you get, turn this to the Chargers, Herm. Oh, boy. All right, here we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All three of us, I, I've heard you and Darren have this conversation many oh, times. Boy. All right, Darren? The lightning yeah. bolts, huh? I mean, when you talk about a team and, and trust and all these sorts of things, now you got all these new guys in different positions. I mean, when we see the Chargers at the end of the year blast the Ravens yeah. or kill the Raiders on the road when they've got nothing to play for, but sandwiched in between a must-win game in Detroit, and they get annihilated. Now how, how can you tell what's going on with a team like the Chargers? The Chargers have a, a talent disease. On paper, before the season, one of the teams considered to go to the Super Bowl. Rightly so. Got a lot of talent. Problem is, emotionally, they play like this. Up and down. They're like stock market. I don't know if you guys are in the stock market. I've never been we in the stock market. We got out. I've Actually, been, lately, it's been more. Yeah, we got out. I've never been <laughs> We're done. I, I never trust stock. I never, 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 never my whole life. Okay. But they're like this. Okay. And, and, and that's the problem. You see them when you go, whatever they're doing. And, and then they, and they always feel like at the end, we're going to make our run. See? Because they got talent. The quarterback? Oh. Oh. All-star quarterback. Has a chance to maybe be a Hall of Fame quarterback. They got good players. But they emotionally lose their focus during the course of the season. Why? I, who do you blame? I, but who do we blame? I don't know who to blame. Well, blame. I mean, is it, 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 we, yeah, here we go. Blame the coach. There you go. Blame Norv. <laughs> Finally. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Let's blame Norv. Yeah, He's agree. the out. Let's blame Marty. Let's blame who was before Marty. Uh, the other guy. Mike Riley. Other? Mike Riley. Let's blame the coach. There's always a coach. You know what? Let me tell you something, guys. And I'm saying this as a player. I never blamed the coach when I played bad. It wasn't the coach's fault. See, coaches don't play, guys. That's the problem I have with players today sometimes. They say, well, it's the system. You kidding me? It doesn't matter. I played right corner, man. When I broke the huddle, my job is to cover that cat. And I don't care what the call was. He could have put me in a better situation. Look at all that. Cover the guy. Go out there and do your job. Okay? Don't, don't say what's the coach. Well, he should have called this play. Or... We worked out too long. We should have cut practice by five. I hear all this stuff. You're a professional football player, man. Well, then whose fault is it that a team is on an emotional roller coaster? This is Herm Edwards. Where's on. your leaders at? So it's, it's guys in the locker room. Where's your leaders, leaders at? Okay. Where are, they, where are those guys at? What, you know what? It's hard to lead when you, when, you, when you lose three games in a row. When you win three, everybody's in front of the <laughs> Let me ask you this. Everybody's in front of the Let me ask you this. Whose fault is it in an organization – when there are not the personalities to be great leaders in a locker room. Who's doing the drafting? Okay, see, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Herm Edwards he's, is on he's San giving you all the right leader, answers. Who's double X to 90. You are just, I'm pitching softballs, and you're knocking you're out of the fucking him. park. No, I'm telling you killing it. I know, I'm saying to the you. One, the one thing I, I believe in is telling people the truth. Right, but isn't it more important when you're building a football team mm. that not only do you look at their 40 time and their bench press and how many sacks they had in college, isn't it also more important to get to know who the person is and go, this guy right here? He's a little shorter and a little slower, but you know what? He's got some leadership skills that the other guy, who's 6'4", 260, he doesn't have that personality. I'll take the guy with the better leadership skills than the guy with the better 40 time. 
I'm asking you. If, if, if a team is on an emotional roller coaster. You're culture, asking the guy. You're asking the guy that ended his career at San Diego State, that basically got blackballed and not got drafted, was a free agent, and the Chargers, the Chargers, the San Diego Chargers, same stadium I played college football in, they play in, they didn't even call me. Chargers didn't call you? No. You think I enjoyed playing the Chargers my whole career? <laughs> yeah. You go look back at my career and see how many times I lost to the Chargers. Was it personal? Yeah, it was personal. Yeah. Get you some guys like that. Yeah, right. Okay. You might win some football games, right. by the way.